So today I'm going to talk about the functionality that is called as reliability, availability, and serviceability uh, features that are available on the Linux system as such. So to talk about myself, I am basically a Linux kernel engineer and currently been working as a CXL software architect at Micron and uh, been working on driving these software solution architecture for CXL systems. That's our uh, latest um, memory technology that is evolving uh, and uh, been working with Micron, which is one of the world leader in the memory solutions as such. So basically I been uh, known as a technical leader as well as a mentor and having a broad experience in Linux platform in embedded systems and, and enterprise systems and open source software development. So the agenda is to understand what is the uh, RAS functionalities, how it spans across the different systems uh, at the different levels, hardware, firmware, operating system at the application level. And then look at this functionality, how the Linux system ecosystem supports that. Taking an example of memory device uh, and how the functionalities affects with this. And this functionality, they are been uh, spanned across the kernel components and the application components as such. So basically to start with, like uh, we are aware that the scale of the data center has been growing exponentially with the increase in the hardware, in the workloads, density, and the high performance requirement as such. And as the complexity and the requirement grows, there are sometimes the downsides that the downtime occurs due to the device failures as such. And then that causes the problems in maintaining the stability of the system. So how this, that this problem can be handled. So the industry and the academia is working, has developed the solutions to take care of this downtime issues as such related problems in terms of reliability, availability of the system, and serviceability of the system. And that's where, uh, that's called as the RAS system. The these are the different functionalities when we talk about the system as such. So in most of the state of art servers, the servers that sits in the data centers as such, they should be capable of having, providing this functionality to have the sustained operation going on. So let's look at the definition of the, uh, what this, uh, each of these component means as such. Like when we say uh, reliability, it basically it represents the ability of the equipment to prevent and correct, prevent or correct the errors as such. And it can be quantified by, uh, by averaging the time interval between the failures as such, defined uh, as the mean time between the failures. And uh, for example, like reliability features attempt to correct or isolate the errors. And uh, while doing so, it might try to stop the related program or the entire system. And to take an example, we can take a memory device, which basically uh, can use a error correcting code uh, to detect the faults in the memory at a particular location in the memory and uh, it can also correct it before the data that is stored uh, into the location is consumed by the processor as such. And availability, it can be represented as the ability to be ready to provide the correct service. Uh, possibly at times uh, the service might be, have a degre degraded capability or performance. And it, uh, we can quantify it as the duration of the time uh, downtime for a certain period as such. Accordingly, it is measured by the number of nines as such. So basically, it provides, it uh, serves so like it detects and corrects the faults rather as opposed to detect or rip and repair the uh, faults as such. And if you again take an example, memory example as such, in this case, if an error is detected on a memory, and uh, it has not been corrected by the ECC code as such. In that case, what corrective action can be taken as such? So in that case, some, the notification can be given to the kernel or to the operating system 
and it would take an, a corrective action like offlining the pages that have corresponding memory errors as such. And again, the, based on the granularity, the offline can happen at a soft level or the hard, hard level as such. And to talk about serviceability, it's the ability to diagnose and report, repair the faults as such, which may have caused the error or might cause an error in future as such. So again, taking the memory example, like um, memory repair techniques uh, that can allow the memory locations uh, uh, where the error has occurred uh, to occur in that case, the memory can be replaced. Uh, uh, the uh, repairing of the error can happen by replacing the faulted memory with another spare part as such. Okay, so how this um, uh, reliability, availability, and service uh, serviceability can be improved? Uh, can be improved, uh, that is, uh, it has to be improved so that it would uh, help to reduce the downtime. In that case, the system should be capable of detecting the hardware errors uh, when possible and correct them in runtime as such. And the system should provide a mechanism to detect those errors and uh, warn the system admin or administration fr framework, whatever it is, to take the appropriate action as such. Okay. And this, uh, this uh, particular mechanism, it can be a combination of um, various mixture of like, it can be at the uh, process technology level, it can be at the architecture level, uh, firmware, uh, uh, system software means uh, at the OS kernel level, and it can be at the application level as such. Uh, the combination of those can be used to provide the improved reliability, availability, and serviceability functionality as such. Okay, and uh, this can be this can be vendor specific or it can be application implementation specific as such. So again, if we take an example uh, like uh, memory, like uh, CXL memory, I, I'll take an example which I've been working as such. So the functionality can be supported by the hardware memory module, and some functionality can be supported at the firmware level or at the uh, kernel level as such. And again, to give a more elaborate example is like, um, uh, 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 is that the improvements can happen at the IT service level or at the hardware level. Like taking an example of hardware measures is like the, uh, uh, at the CPU level, it is to detect the errors at the instruction execution or at the cache level as such. Now taking an example for memory, in that case, uh, having the, error correction logic, ECC, to detect and correct the errors. And um, another way is like the memory, me memor uh, memory mirroring uh, mechanism uh, where we have an active, active or active standby uh, configuration uh, that can be implemented to reduce this so downtime uh, time as such. Again, at the system level, you can have um, at a runtime hot uh, uh, addition or removal of this uh, particular components as such, and uh, uh, components and the other measures is like uh, means uh, uh, hot add plug or remove or swapping can happen. That may be at the I/O control uh, I/O cards as such. The errors might be collected through the uh, PCI error, advanced error reporting mechanism as such. And another mechanism is the predictive failure analysis as such. So the hardware or the kernel provides data and this data can be collected by the application, maybe for a framework or the application tools as such. And then they can do analysis on that data collected to uh, make sure the further error uh, the system does not get degraded further or corrective actions happen based on the prediction that is done on the data that is collected, okay? And at the IO path, the uh, RAS function can be improved by adding the checksum, CRC checksums as such. Uh, at the storage level, a read implementation or journal file system at the file system level, 
the implementation the file system can be used as a journal file system as such or checksums and all that uh, considering the other, other components power and cooling can have a, a spare um, system for replacement whenever then error occurs so these are the different mechanisms and can be used to improve the ras functionality so here this is just to give a pictorial idea like how the ras functionality can span from the hardware to the firmware then to the operating systems and then to the application so at the application level basically it does the work of error reporting and doing analysis as such on the error logs that is called and then based on configuration it can take a corrective actions as such so here in this case it's just an example that i'm going to cover up later the ras dem which does the work of correcting the um, uh, care correcting the errors in uh, particularly memory uh, take an example of memory it can go and uh, offline the page corresponding uh, where the error has occurred as such so offline again it can be soft offline or hard offline so in that case basically what it does it removes that page from the uh, uh, list of the pages that the operating system uses until the next reset happens as such okay so basically the os uh, identifies or categorize the errors as a correctable error or uncorrectable error and uh, correctable errors are those that are detected and corrected by the hardware and uh, gen um, generally the software is not involved in that does not need to take any action as such uh, and the another is the error system software most of the time the system software is not been involved as us so but when the system software is involved to prevent the correction errors uh, but at a time system software can be involved to make sure that this correctable errors are uh, uh, not growing to a point where it becomes uncorrectable errors so the measures from the system software will come like okay the system has detected correctable error it has corrected okay so the uh, operating system can keep a track of like how many correctable errors has occurred on a particular page or particular memory continuously and that this gives an indication that that the memory is been corrected uh, in a particular span of time or it uh, or based on some threshold value so there is a possibility that this memory location or this particular things might go Uh, completely raw, uh, corrupted as such means that location might become or that memory location might not be corrected as such so based on that the operating system can take some corrective actions as such okay so again taking example of this excel memory device or memory device in that case the correctable errors can happen in the memory media or it can happen at the device path as such Uh, let's look at the uncorrectable errors as such so uncorrectable errors uh, happen whenever the correction uh, error correction threshold it has crossed the error correction threshold and the system is not able to auto correct those errors in that case those are been handled through the machine check architecture and here in this case uh, the, they've been broadly categorized as uncorrectable recovery errors uncorrectable non fatal errors and fatal errors as such so the uncorrectable recoverable errors they are detected and recovered by the hardware uh, with a minimal or no support from the software as such and basically those uh, uh, in that case the data uh, data loss can happen but the data loss does not uh, does not lead to the uh, does not lead to the uh, crashing of the system or stopping of claims the system is uh, uh, it is it is in continued operation as such only the particular part that is get affected in this uh, in that case as such and uncorrected non fatal errors they are detected by the hardware and they do do require software intervention as such the device might continue to work operate except uh, for the data identified for that particular uh, location of memory as such particular if we take an example from memory as such so in that case we can say that the particular memory location has been poisoned it would not be used as such so the uh, consequence of this that the data can get lost uh, and uh, uh, the data would get lost and possibly that process might be affected 
or it might, uh, uh, the process, the task that is accessing that memory might need to be restarted or might need to be terminated. But the whole of the system is still uh, continue the operation as such. Whereas in case of uncorrected fatal errors in that case, uh, that uh, these are the condition where the system can go into a non-operation state as such. These, these are not being corrected and cannot be handled as such and there is a possibility of data loss happening as such. So how these uncorrectable errors are being handled is um, uh, again like uh, if you take an example memory address as detected an uncorrectable error. So basically uh, a data poisoning is, mechanism is used to inform the CPU that the re data requested has an uncorrectable error. And whenever the hardware detects an uncorrectable error, it routes a poison based along with the data to the CPU. So in case of x86, uh, when the CPU detects this, uh, this particular poison bit, it sends the interrupt to the OS, notify that, that there is error. And this signal what is called as the machine check exception. So the OS then, this, uh, then examines this uncorrectable error and determine if this software can recover and perform some recovery actions on that. And in case of uh, Linux system, the OS receives this interrupt for this uncorrectable error. And um, particularly, again, taking the memory media, in that case, the operating systems or the kernel subsystem which handles this, uh, it, it, uh, the recovery action it would take is it goes and tries to offline the page memory corresponding to that uh, uncorrectable error as such and add that uh, particular memory location to the list that uh, that uh, that lists the uh, uh, list um, the areas that are uh, that contain the unknown uncorrectable errors as such so here uh, this uh, gives us the overall uh, picture about the functionality uh, uh, that has been implemented in the linux system to take care of the different kinds of errors as such so here, the Linux system is responsible for event collection, that is the error collection, and performing the memory offline functionality. And there, the functionality spans the kernel and the user space components. Uh, in the kernel, uh, there are two uh, modules that refer, that works for correctable errors. Uh, and the uh, correctable error collector is one module that is CC, and another is the error detection and correction module, that is EDAC as such. Okay. And at the user space level, there are a set of tools that are being used, which basically does the work of collecting the events or collecting the information, error information uh, from the kernel drivers or from the kernel subsystem through uh, maybe kernel trace or SysFS and trace, and then based on that information, it, uh, based on the configuration it has been done, the corrective actions are being taken as such. That there are a set of tools like RAS daemon is one of the tools, and there is MC log as such. So here we will look uh, how this uh, RAS daemon uses this information to perform this memory page offline. Okay. Now here in this case, this is I've just taken a device as the CXL memory device, and uh, it. Uh, can, it it does uh, it's basically it sits as a PCI controller onto the system. So uh, so here in this case the um, CXL memory device it's sending the errors or error information through the um, upstream port to the downstream port and uh, in the kernel these are the different modules uh, subsystem modules are there which collects this error information. Here one you see is one is the ETAC is the one that collects the, detects the errors and collect the information of the errors. Then there, another information can be said to the PCI AER uh, interface uh, as such. And then those information from this module, they go, the information is collected as a trace events. And these trace events are sent to the users. Uh, uh, the, these trace events are been um, uh, monitored by the uh, application, user-based application here, in this case, the RAS daemon. 
it collects the stress events and based on that it performs the action as such. Okay. And the another component that we talk about is this correct, correctable error collector that is a kernel, a kernel driver as such which collects the, uh, uh, which logs the uh, errors, correctable errors that has happened as such. So basically this is the uh, CSE is the driver that resides in the kernel sources drivers RAS uh, CSE directory. So basically it does the work of registering the uh, uh, machine check exception handler to receive the notification upon whenever the uh, correctable uh, event has occurred as such, detected as such. And what it does is it, it logs this information about the correctable error and uh, logs the, it logs and it counts that how many error, uh, error events has occurred on that particular memory location as such. And it stores this information into an array of 5112 elements. And whenever a correctable error is detected, this log entry is created. And this log entry is made up of page frame number, generation number, uh, and the count as such. So page frame number corresponds to the page frame uh, number of the memory where the error, uh, uh, correctable error has uh, happened as such. And generation field is basically used uh, to decay the entry as such. That is when an error is at, uh, dete uh, detected, it is set to the value 1, 1 to indicate that it is the fresh entry corresponding to that page frame number as such. And the count is used to count the number of uh, correctable er event occurred on that particular page frame number. And it, this forms as a threshold counter. So when the count becomes 1, 0, 2, 3, in that case, it has reached to a point that this uh, uh, particular page frame number might has been corrected these many 1, 0, 2, uh, 2 3 times as such. So that gives an indication that eventually that page might uh, become uncorrectable as such. So this um, uh, correctable error collector uses this information to trigger uh, uh, taking a corrective action like offlining that particular page as such. So with this uh, correct, correctable error collector, uh, uh, the another functionality, this spring cleaning is a mechanism that happens uh, periodically are based on the entries in the logs as such. That is a mechanism used to decay the generation field, uh, uh, field of the uh, log entry as such. So basically it is used to determine what pages in their area has been affected by the memory error. And uh, whenever this play, spring clean happens, the generation uh, field is decayed or uh, decremented by one. So it goes from one one to one zero to zero one and zero where one one means that uh, uh, the recently the um, mm, er error has been detected on that uh, particular page frame number and zero means uh, that no error on that page for a while and how the spring the spring cleaning can be triggered under two different conditions like either when the number of entries in that array is reached to 128 elements or uh, periodically it is done minimum uh, in every 24 hours or max one month as such. So this uh, collectible, correctable error collector is basically it works on the, um, by keeping track of the correctable errors that has been handled by the hardware as such. And uh, based on the count and on that, it would take an action to offline that particular memory pages as such. So another set of um, kernel functionality is the error detection and correction modules. So basically these are the set of um, kernel modules with the purpose to detect and report the errors in the system's memory as such. So basically it contains a set of drivers corresponding to memory controller as such and it collects the information from the memory controllers as such. And Along with this memory control information, some drivers also uh, collect the information related uh, correct from the PCI, uh, that is the advanced error reporting. Errors are also being collected. And it provides a way to report errors detected by the 
controller to the user space. So it collects the information per memory controller, the number of memory control that are being supported on the system on the, attached to the CPU uh, and the controller. And it collects the information that is correctable and uncorrectable errors as such. And basically it does by pulling the device TRS register. And uh, what it does is decodes the errors into the dim labels affected by the error and does the association of the memory architecture and the dims through the set of uh, SysFS entries as such. So based on the number of memory controller onto the system, you'll, you'll see the number of entries that are there in the device, um, sys device system, EDEC MC directory as such. So and those errors that are being collected, uh, they are reported to the console uh, in the log printed in the kernel buffer and also via the kernel, uh, kernel trace events as such. So kernel trace event is a mechanism, uh, uh, mechanism like it's a kind of a static instrumentation done in the kernel code paths, uh, which helps to collect the information about that code flow as such. So these kernel trace events are been inserted into this um, modules and that information can be available to the user space application. The trace events can be read from the uh, user space application and that uh, particular application can take per, uh, do further analysis, uh, predictive analysis on that uh, events generated, error uh, events generated and take the corrective actions. Now we are in this case, um, uh, this uh, for each MC device controls sets of uh, dim, uh, means like when you say memory, behind the memory they are in the form of the dims and the information about each of the dim labels and all those things that we get from the SysFS entries as such. And along with the dims, each, each of this uh, microcontrol uh, uh, directory, it has the chip select row corresponding information about that and uh, the other details. So here in this case, if you see at the right hand side, the entry particular MC0 is the memory controller where the dims are being uh, behind that. And it shows the entries, SysFS entries corresponding to the uh, correctable error count, uncorrectable error count, and the other information. So this information has been populated by the uh, EDAC drivers and then they are, they, uh, through the kernel trace events, they can be collected, uh, sent through the trace events and the user space application can take those information and take the appropriate actions. So for this EDAC driver, there are the set of tools, part of this EDAC uh, tools as such. So one of the tool is the EDAC util. Uh, user space tool that reads and reports this uncorrectable and correctable error information recorded by the EDEC uh, driver components as such. And uh, another tool is the EDEC control that is for more for the configuration, uh, making any changes to this parameters as such. So here in this case, uh, this is snapshot of um, EDEC util tool where it uh, tells now here in this case, the system is up and running, so it does not choose any error. But in case when the system has some errors, then it would be populated uh, with the information that comes from this um, SysFS entry as such. Okay, so this is what we looked at, the correctable error collector, one of the kernel component, another is the EDAC tools, set of drivers. Now, uh, this information, uh, collecting this information from these modules and then performing the appropriate corrective actions. And as we have seen that one of the corrective action is to see if um, in case of correctable errors, if it reaches some uh, threshold value as, as such, one, zero, two, three, uh, I means a maximum one K value in that case, uh, pay, uh, page offlining. Uh, soft page offlining can happen. So what exactly is soft page offlining? It's a kernel function to remove the page from the usable page list, uh, which means that the page will no longer available for the by the OS until the next reset. And it can be triggered by the 
kernel uh, by the kernel space component that is the CEC event error or it can be triggered from the RAS daemon. Now, you are in this if we go back to this diagram here. So, here we see that this is the uh, uh, error uh, collective error which can trigger the soft offlining of the functionality whenever it detects whenever the threshold value has reached the whenever the correctable count has reached, reached the threshold value or another path is like it can be triggered from the RAS daemon. that is the user space component. Okay. So, what basically it does is that uh, the page uh, soft page offlining happens by writing the physical address corresponding to the page where the error has occurred into the sysfs entry. So, this is the this is knob through which a page of soft offlining can be triggered as such. And when the page offline soft offlining is uh, triggered uh, as the page is not yet corrupt, cor uh, corrupted as such. So, in that case no process is killed as a consequence and if the page is not is uh, is clean in that case uh, it will just invalidate that page and no uh, it will not be available to the OS. If the page is dirty then the page in that case the page contents are copied into another page and then uh, before it has been invalidated and then this page is uh, listed as a bad page list which is not used until the next reset. Uh, now, the hard offlining is the functionality uh, basically to make sure that the system does not go into a critical situation like a kernel panic or system hang as such. And again it can it uh, it is triggered from the kernel space when an uncorrected correctable error is detected. And from the user space uh, again the RAS daemon can also trigger the hard page offline feature uh, if it figures out that uh, the particular page cannot be soft offline as such. If soft offlining is not sufficient for that particular page, then uh, hard offlining, uh, page offlining will happen. Again, this CSFS knob has been used to trigger by writing that physical address, uh, physical address corresponding to that page into that CSFS entry. And when the hard offlining is executed, if uh, uh, if the corrupted page is free, it will only be invalidated. And if the page has been used by one or more process, the page is invalidated and the process using that page might be killed or it might trigger the IO errors as needed. And if the process cannot be killed or stopped, which means it can be some critical process then the kernel just ignores that error and whenever that critical uh, process or uh, identity accesses that uh, page access is made then the system leads to kernel panic as such. So, these are the uh, corrective actions that can happen on the memory location either soft offlining or hard offlining. Uh, now, how does, uh, let us look at the user space component uh, tool that is the RAS daemon. So, RAS daemon is a user space tool that provides access to the kernel uh, RAS reports collected through the trace events. Uh, it collects data via the kernel trace events uh, from several sources that one is the ETAC module set of uh, modules then the MCA and the PCI uh, error reporting. All these uh, kernel code paths, they generate the trace events corresponding to the correctable errors or uncorrectable errors and then uh, this uh, the RAS daemon collects that, uh, the, this information through this uh, trace, uh, trace events as such. And this trace events can also be stored into a persistent memory database that is the, it uses the SQL uh, for further query and analysis as such. Uh, it also have this control uh, variant of the tool basically used to configure the DEMS and do some uh, reporting as such. So, here is the snapshot of uh, control summary error count and in that case it shows that uh, number of errors whatever it has occurred uh, along with the information memory controller channel DEM 
uh, number and all this information it generates as such. Okay. Now, this is another example that I have collected the snapshots of the output uh, to demonstrate how the uh, RAS daemon can perform the page offlining functionality. So, here in this case on the Intel system load the corresponding modules, uh, uh, EDAC modules as such. And then uh, I use the fake uh, uh, MC error functionality. Uh, again, that is a script in the RAS daemon git, git repository, which basically uh, goes and injects some memory errors uh, by writing into the sysfs entries as such. So, here in this case, um, the errors are generated by writing into this uh, memory controller error, uh, entries in the sysfs. And when that code path hits, it generates the trace events. And those trace events are collected by the RAS daemon. And when the, the RAS daemon collects this event and maintains the trace, uh, maintains the correctable error count as such. Now, here in this case, particularly the um, fake uh, error inject is happening for the correctable errors. If you look at the print log, it says the corrected error. And here in this case, a particular memory location is given. Just for the demo purpose, I use memory location zero as such. So that would, uh, that's a fake memory, uh, uh, trace even that has been generated. But in the RAS daemon, uh, the threshold value it has been configured for the corrected error, corrected error events occurred is 50. So when the threshold value causes, uh, oh, when the threshold value reaches the value 50, then it uh, triggers the correction path of initiating the page offline. So here at this point, it triggers the page offline functionality. And if it happened to be a real, uh, real runtime scenario, the trace events would have been generated with the actual values as such, memory uh, at a particular memory location. And the uh, RAS daemon would, based on the threshold value, would have triggered the soft page offlining or hard page offlining. And that's how the flow goes that the information from the hardware calls to the hard, uh, to the drivers. The driver sends the trace events and from trace, based on the trace events analysis, the application can take the action of corrective actions based on those memory errors. So this gives us the end-to-end -end flow from the hardware to the kernel to the applications. Okay. Okay. That's where we reach to the end of this uh, uh, presentation, a covering of the components, the RAS functionality in the kernel and at the user space uh, component. That is basically taking an example of RAS daemon as the tool for handling the RAS functionality. Okay. And these are the references that have been used from the kernel sources and the application JIT repository as such. And CXL, I've been working on memory CXL components, so that's where I just included CXL as a memory device example. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs>